Beets are another crop that we eat both the root and the leaves of. It belongs to the botanical family called Amaranthaceae. As you might guess, amaranth flowers are also in this family, as well as Swiss chard, whose leaves closely resemble beet greens, and spinach. Among the cultivars of beets that we have out there are sugar beets, which you may have heard of, which have a very high concentration of sugar in the form of sucrose. Therefore, they are grown as a commercial crop to make regular old table sugar. But the cultivars that we grow in our gardens, we grow to eat the beets. Some folks find that beets have kind of an earthy taste. This taste comes from a compound called geosmin, G-E-O-S-M-I-N, produced either by the beets themselves or by soil microbes that live in the beets. We're not sure which, but don't worry. All healthy plants and animals have microbes living on and in them. So here we are about to plant some beets. This variety happens to be the Detroit Dark Red Beet, a very nice mid-sized beet. You'll see on the package that it takes 28 days until you can harvest baby beet greens, and then 50 days for more mature beets, which really isn't too long at all. So here are the seeds. They go a half inch deep because they're fairly big, bumpy seeds. The bigger seeds are, the deeper they're planted. So we'll do about 10 seeds to the foot so they can be packed in fairly tight and then we'll thin them later. I always estimate a half inch to be about up to my first knuckle there, but remember you don't have to be exact. So we'll drill holes with our finger. Good way to get your hands in the dirt. A side note on beet seeds. They're somewhat unique in that each of these big beet seeds actually contains two to five little seeds. So when they come up, you may notice a cluster of little seedlings where only one seed was planted or so you thought. So I drop them into the holes that I've already made and then we'll just cover them up, break up any little dirt clods over them and then we'll tamp down the soil with the palm of our hand so that the seeds get good contact with the soil. So here's little beet seedlings with their first true leaves. After those first little pointy leaves, then you get the shorter squat of true leaves. The two cultivars planted here are Early Wonder Tall Top and Touchstone Gold Beets. Beets are grown worldwide actually, and they grow best in cooler temperatures. Here are some lovely mid-sized greens. The beets aren't ready yet, but they'll be thin to give the beetroot ample room to grow nice and round. And here you can see even better that the red beet leaves have the red ribs and the golden beet greens don't. They're just a lovely shade of green all the way through. So in order to get whatever size beet you might want from baby to big, we have to thin the herd, you might say. So we're gonna thin them out so that there are a couple of inches between each remaining beet plant. So we're gonna grab one firmly down by where the greens meet the beet and pull it out. Oh, and there's an adorable little beet and you can eat that as well as the greens. And you can see that long root tail. So you can harvest beets when they are pretty much the size that you like, all the way from delicate babies to pretty big beets that are good for pickling. We're gonna grab it where the greens meet the beet so the greens don't break when we pull. They'll typically keep growing throughout the season and you don't want them to get really gigantic because then they can get fibrous and stringy and they're not as sweet. Beets are an excellent source of fiber, folate, potassium, and iron. You can tell by their vibrant color, they're loaded with antioxidants. Also called beetroot red, Betalane is the most common pigment in beetroots, responsible for their strong red color. Frequent consumption of these beets can reduce your overall cancer risk. Today we're going to be roasting beets with orange and mustard. You'll need about two pounds of beets, four and a half tablespoons of olive oil total, three oranges, which will end up juicing, some salt and pepper, and some Dijon mustard. First, we can top our beet greens, but don't throw them away because we can use them in other ways. You can saute them for omelets, soups, really anything else you would normally add greens to. Even just by themselves, sauteed with olive oil, garlic, onion, salt, they make a nice, easy, quick snack. You can get some water boiling on your stovetop and boil your beets until tender. This is so we can peel them easily. Try to drop them close to the water so it creates less of a splash. Different beet sizes will take different amounts of time, but I'll boil these for about 10 minutes and then check. Once you can pierce them with a fork, they're tender. You can remove your beets from the boiling water. I would run them under cold water to cool them down. They will be far easier to handle while you're trying to peel them. You can use a peeler or a knife, but your thumb should work just fine too. If you feel like they're not peeling very well, then they probably need a little bit more time boiling. Now that the beets are peeled, we can pop them in the refrigerator to chill. 
While the beets are chilling in the fridge, you can measure out your oil, salt, and pepper. For the first bowl, you can put one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. I'm measuring the olive oil just because, but if you're in your own kitchen, you can eyeball it to reduce utensil use. A quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. You can then mix your OJ and mustard while you wait. I have my three oranges already squeezed into the bowl. Then you'll add one and a half tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Next, you can add the other two tablespoons of olive oil. By now, the beets are probably cool enough to cut them into wedges. First, you can cut off the ends, then cut them in half so you have a flat surface to work with on the cutting board. Next, you can make your wedges and add them into the bowl with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Once they're tossed in their olive oil, salt, and pepper bowl, you can pour the OJ and mustard mixture over and mix everything together. Once everything is mixed together, preheat your oven to 425 and wait for it to heat up. Next, you'll roast your beets for about 15 minutes. And here's our roasted beets, served over a bed of spinach with pine nuts and feta and some salmon on the side. They will likely taste delicious on any other salads as well. Enjoy!